I think many of you are familiar with the story of Pompeii, a city buried under a thick layer of volcanic ash. This tragedy, which claimed the lives of more than 2,000 people, occurred in 79 AD, but remains unforgettable to this day. Excavations in Pompeii have been ongoing for over 200 years, with archaeologists regularly making new discoveries. In this video, I would like to acquaint you more closely with the culture and life of the people who perished in that catastrophe and talk about the most astonishing finds in the ruins of this city. Enjoy watching. Scientists from the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology in Italy have been studying the tragedy of Pompeii for a long time. They recently discovered that the eruption killed the Pompeians in just 15 minutes. Experts have always believed that the city was destroyed in a very short period of time. This was evident from the remains of those who had tried to find shelter and survive. The plaster casts reveal the positions of the Pompeians at the moment of their death. Some froze, sitting against a wall, seemingly resigned to their fate. Others tried to cover their heads. Some crawled on their knees towards buildings, while others tried to shield their children. All of these people had horror and panic on their faces because they did not expect that no one could survive the encounter with the natural disaster. However, the exact time it took to annihilate the inhabitants of Pompeii remained an open question. To determine this, scientists studied the pyroclastic flows of Vesuvius found in Pompeii. Pyroclastic flows are often compared to avalanches, only not of snow, but of burning debris. These flows descend the volcano's slope at speeds of over 100 kilometers per h, destroying everything in their path. To calculate the time, specialists considered the distance from Vesuvius to Pompeii and the speed of the deadly volcanic mixture. Disaster modeling showed that the pyroclastic flows reached Pompeii within minutes. The city was engulfed by a black cloud consisting of carbon dioxide, chlorides, particles of scorching ash, and volcanic glass. The temperature inside this cloud exceeded 100 degrees Celsius. At that moment, people no longer had a chance to escape. According to scientists, toxic gases, ash, volcanic particles, and the high temperature of the cloud killed about 2,000 Pompeians in 15 minutes. One of the most gruesome finds by archaeologists in Pompeii was a beheaded skeleton. The remains of this individual were found under a thick layer of volcanic rock with a huge boulder lying nearby. Scientists believe that during the tragedy, a massive stone fell on the man's head. To test their theory, researchers decided to move the boulder. To their surprise, they found no remains of the skull. The stone, which fell on the victim's head, weighed over 250 kilograms. Upon falling, it not only decapitated the man, but also shattered the upper part of his rib cage. Examination of the remains showed that they belonged to a man about 30 years old, who suffered from a tibial disease. Scientists speculate that he was fleeing when the eruption began. However, during an earthquake, a stone that might have served as a support in a doorway of a building where the man sought shelter collapsed on him. Excavations in Pompeii have been ongoing for over 200 years, and archaeologists continue to discover new finds that reveal episodes in the lives of the ancient city's inhabitants. For example, the discovered remains of a newborn, next to which were the remains of a woman, astounded researchers. They indicated that at the moment of the tragedy, this poor woman gave birth to her baby. Imagine the agony she endured, trying to bear the pain of childbirth and knowing that her child was about to die. Among the remains of the deceased was also a pregnant woman, lying next to coins and jewels. Her large, rounded belly is clearly visible on the plaster cast. Scientific studies showed that the woman was 36 weeks pregnant and was about to give birth soon. Unfortunately, her baby never got to see this world. In the early 20th century, during excavations in Pompeii, the remains of two embracing people were discovered. Initially, scientists believed they belonged to a pair of lovers. Later, experts concluded they were not a romantic couple, but rather two women, 
possibly sisters. But thanks to modern DNA research, it was discovered that the remains belonged to two men. The nature of their relationship remains a mystery. It's only certain that they were not relatives. Some historians have speculated that the men were in a romantic relationship, as homosexuality was quite common in ancient Rome. However, these two individuals could also have been just close friends. Regardless of the nature of their relationship, this plaster cast shows us how precious the embrace of a loved one can be. If you are an animal lover, this plaster cast might be heart-wrenching for you. Since ancient times, dogs have served humans as loyal assistants and fearless guards. Despite this, sometimes their owners believed that this was merely the dog's duty and did not reciprocate their feelings. This dog, whose cast was made in 1874, belonged to a wealthy Pompeian named Marcus Visonius Primus. When he sensed that his life was in danger, he decided to leave the city. In doing so, he didn't even think of his loyal companion, who remained sitting on a chain in the atrium of the house. Imagine the hopeless situation this dog was in. It tried to scramble up as its body was engulfed by falling ash. However, it couldn't escape because the chain prevented it. The posture captured in this cast demonstrates that it fought for life until the last second. Interestingly, the dog's neck was adorned with a collar with bronze spikes, and at the entrance to its owner's house was a mosaic depicting a fierce dog. This means Marcus Vasonius Primus wanted to show that he had a very good guard, and it was not advisable to enter his property without permission. Yet, during the catastrophe, he decided to abandon this animal to its fate, even though he could have saved it. You may be surprised, but ancient Romans enjoyed leaving various inscriptions on building walls just as much as modern people do. Such actions are considered vandalism, but who knows, maybe in 2,000 years they will be as valuable as the graffiti of the Pompeians are now. So what did the ancient Romans write about? Their messages were diverse, ranging from love confessions to dirty jokes. Most inscriptions were in the style of, so-and-so was here similar to the senselessness of modern times. Among the graffiti were curses and slander. For example, Epaphra, you have become bald, or Epaphroditus spent all his money on prostitutes. There were also unusual inscriptions revealing the personal lives of Pompeians like, I am pregnant by Atimitus. Also, the city's walls had promotional inscriptions calling people to the opening of a new establishment. And of course, there were philosophical reflections on life. Hard to believe. But ancient Romans were just ordinary people like you and me. In 2018, during excavations at the site of the ancient city, a villa belonging to a wealthy and respected individual was discovered. During the first phase of the excavations, archaeologists found a wooden manger and well-preserved remains of a horse, in June of the same year, researchers were able to fully clear the stable of volcanic rock and found the remains of two more horses, as well as fragments of harnesses and saddles, decorated with wooden and bronze elements. Scientists were able to obtain a complete plaster copy of the horse, whose remains were best preserved. This revealed that the unknown wealthy person's horses belonged to a purebred breed of that time. This was indicated by their small size compared to modern horses. Additionally, scientists speculated that they were harnessed by their owner during the beginning of the eruption. Presumably, the person tried to escape, but did not succeed. According to archaeologist Massimo Osana, the horses died a terrible death. They suffocated under a layer of hot ash. It is worth noting that researchers had not previously been able to find horse remains. Therefore, this discovery was very valuable to them. Many facts about the events that occurred during the eruption of Vesuvius are known thanks to Pliny the Younger. He is known as an ancient Greek historian and politician who wrote letters about the events in Pompeii to the historian Tacitus. At the time of this natural disaster, Pliny was 18 years old. He lived with his mother in the city of Messenum, located 30 kilometers from Pompeii. His uncle, Pliny the Elder, was a well-known figure of the time. 
He commanded the fleet in the Bay of Naples, wrote many books, and studied science. On that day, he performed a heroic act, resulting in his death. Pliny the Elder was one of the first in Messinum to learn about the incident and decided to go to Pompeii, hoping to find survivors and save them. He also took a scribe with him, who was supposed to record everything happening. Thanks to these records, his nephew, Pliny the Younger, was able to reconstruct the events of that horror. Thirty years after the tragedy, Pliny the Younger corresponded for a long time with the historian Tacitus, who asked him to tell about the destruction of Pompeii. According to Pliny, before the eruption, a huge black cloud of ash was approaching the city. People were frightened by this and tried to escape, but everything happened incredibly fast, and all the inhabitants of Pompeii were doomed. Black ash fell on the city like rain, and then for a moment it became light. But this light was not from the sun, but from the fire. What happened next is well known from history. Archaeologists still find the remains of people and animals that were buried under tons of ash. Archaeologists made a surprising discovery, a street stall where food was prepared for the townspeople around 2,000 years ago. The ancient fast food restaurant, or Thermopolium, was richly decorated with images of a sea nymph sitting on a horse, vessels with wine, birds, and animals. Scientists believe these paintings served as a kind of menu. Here you could have lunch with dishes made from chicken and duck. Of course, good wine was also available. In the clay containers of the Thermopolium, remains of food were found, bones of duck, pig, and goat, as well as fish scales. Several wine amphoras were found under the counter. Moreover, under the thick layer of ash, the remains of a man and a child were discovered. Likely, they belonged to a worker of the eatery and his son, who perished during the catastrophe. Amazingly, the Thermopolium of Pompeii was not the only establishment of its kind in ancient Rome. Street eateries were very popular among the ancient people, because, admittedly, tasting delicious, freshly prepared food is doubly enjoyable in the fresh air. Bread has long been considered a symbol of fertility. During excavations in Pompeii, about 40 bakeries were found. The largest of them was equipped with several mills, a dough mixing device, and a huge oven, which allowed the production of up to 2,000 loaves per day. Various types of flour and spices were used to bake diverse bread in the city. During the examination of the bakeries, archaeologists found 80 charred loaves in one of them. Apparently, the baker had placed the bread in the oven just before the eruption began. The burnt bread remained in the oven, thus preserving it to this day. This unique discovery allowed scientists to learn what ancient Roman baked goods looked like. The bread was made round, typically 25 centimeters in diameter, and weighed about 580 grams. Sometimes fruits, nuts, and seeds were placed on top of the loaf. The loaf itself consisted of two parts, a base, slightly larger in diameter, and a top divided into eight sections for convenience. Often in the center of the loaf, there was a string to help transport large quantities of bread. Unlike Herculaneum, which was burnt by lava during the eruption, the city of Pompeii was engulfed in ash. The bodies of the deceased were under dense volcanic rock, which over time became harder. When the bodies were completely decomposed, voids formed in the solidified ash layer, capturing the form of the deceased people. This feature was first discovered in 1777, but it was in 1864 that Italian archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli began a detailed study of such voids. It was he who devised a unique yet simple method to study the remains of Pompeii's inhabitants. This technique, known as plaster casting, continues to be used to this day. Instead of trying to extract human remains from the hardened ash, Fiorelli suggested to his colleagues to pour liquid plaster into the voids and wait a few days. As a result of these actions, researchers were able to obtain a plaster form of a person with accurate details of clothing and the posture they were in at the time of death. Now these casts are exhibited at the National Archaeological Museum of Naples. Many visitors still believe they are seeing the real remains of Pompeii's residents.
Unfortunately, none of us stand a chance against the forces of nature. In the terrible tragedy during the eruption of Vesuvius, both adults and small children perished. Among the plaster casts of the Pompeians, there is one that deeply touches the soul, mother and child. The remains of these two individuals were discovered during excavations in 2015. Next to the mother and child was another adult, presumably the father of the child. This cast demonstrates the horror that the residents of Pompeii had to endure. The mother placed her child on her stomach and stretched out her hands, trying to shield him from the endless ash. Fear and absolute helplessness in the face of the natural disaster are visible on her face. The child, due to his age, did not understand what was happening and merely tried to be with his mother in the last moments of his life. Undoubtedly, the villas of wealthy Pompeians hold particular value for archaeologists. This is due to the presence of frescoes, mosaics, and treasures in luxurious homes that help learn more about the culture and lifestyle of ancient Romans in this region. However, the homes of less wealthy individuals are equally intriguing. In 2022, archaeologists were excavating a picturesque area known as the Magic Garden, expecting to find another rich villa. Instead, they discovered a two-story house with clay floors. The first floor of the dwelling had five rooms. In one of the bedrooms, two beds were preserved, one of which was a child's bed. Unlike the luxurious villas, the walls of this house were not even painted, and the floors were made of clay. Despite the modesty of this dwelling, exquisite items were found inside. Next to the bed stood a large chest containing an oil lamp with a bas-relief of Zeus transforming into an eagle. Also in the same room was a decorative round table on three legs, ornamented with a pattern. Saying this house belonged to a poor person would be incorrect. Its owner likely belonged to the middle class of Pompeians, about whom science knows virtually nothing. Thanks to modern research using computer tomography, scientists have discovered an astonishing detail about the ancient inhabitants of Pompeii. They all had healthy teeth. Back in the 19th century, voids left by people and animals were discovered in the volcanic rock. For a long time, scientists filled them with plaster to create impressive casts of the deceased, accurately capturing the facial features and poses of those who were once buried alive under layers of ash. However, this process, of course, did not allow for the examination of the remains. Now scientists have had the opportunity to do so. A detailed study of 89 remains of Pompeii's residents was conducted, and three-dimensional models of these people were created. Researchers were most surprised by how perfect their teeth were. The archaeologist and director of the excavations, Massimo Osana, believes that the teeth of Pompeii's residents were healthy due to proper nutrition. These people consumed vegetables, fruits, and cereals in their diet. There was no sugar in their food, which negatively affects teeth. Additionally, the water drunk by the ancient Romans contained a lot of fluoride, beneficial for tooth enamel. Recent excavations in the ruins of Pompeii have gifted archaeologists with a remarkable find, an ancient domestic sanctuary or lararium. The temple was located in one of the rooms of a revered person's house. It was dedicated to the household guardian gods, the lares, and was beautifully preserved. The walls of this room were adorned with images of snakes, peacocks, and golden beasts engaging in battle with a wild black boar. Some frescoes also feature a deity with the body of a human and the head of a dog, reminiscent of the Egyptian god Anubis. Additionally, the room's walls depicted bird eggs, which at that time were a symbol of fertility. Archaeologists were impressed by this discovery. According to them, the colors on the frescoes have remained vibrant, despite the lararium being created in the first century AD. The thick layer of ash that fell from the volcano during the eruption protected the paintings from external adverse factors. Such domestic temples were an integral part of the culture of ancient Romans. And of course, only very wealthy people could afford their own sanctuary. Apart from the lararium, the territory of this house also revealed traces of fruit gardens and even the ruins of a swimming pool.
Today, the site of the once destroyed city of Pompeii is a vast open air museum covering 44 hectares. One of its exhibits is the Garden of the Fugitives. Before the eruption began, some people sensed danger and decided to leave Pompeii. But there were others who believed that nothing serious would happen and stayed in the city. However, when black ash began to fall from the sky and darkness enveloped Pompeii, people sought refuge, but it was already too late. The remains of these people were found in the 19th century during excavations led by archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli. At that time, Researchers discovered voids in the thick layer of hardened ash and filled them with plaster. This is how the gardens of the fugitives appeared. This silent plaster composition shows how 13 people of different ages tried to find shelter in their gardens, pressing against a stone wall. There were men and women trying to shield their children. Nearly 2,000 years have passed since then, and now trees, flowers, and vineyards have grown again in these gardens, with only 13 plaster casts reminding us of that terrible tragedy. It is commonly believed that the eruption of Mount Vesuvius occurred on August 24, 79 AD, but a recent find in the ruins of Pompeii has cast doubt on this fact. The date of this catastrophe first became known from the letters of the ancient Roman writer and politician Pliny, he reported that the city of Pompeii was destroyed by a volcano nine days before the beginning of September. For a long time, this date was considered official, but modern archaeologists have begun to recognize it as erroneous. This is indicated by some of the latest finds. On the remains of bodies buried under a thick layer of ash, warm clothing was found, typically worn in mid-autumn. Researchers have also found wine preparations from grapes harvested in September, as well as autumn fruits and nuts. In contrast, the summer harvest had already been dried. Another discovery, pointing to the error of the eruption's starting date, is a charcoal inscription made on the wall of one of the houses in Pompeii. After translating the text, it turned out that the wall reads, on the 16th day before the November Kalends. Scientists explained that this message was presumably left by workers engaged in the repair of a wealthy person's house. The charcoal trace was definitely to be erased after the completion of the work, so it is unlikely it was made in the previous year. And accordingly, if the eruption occurred in August, leaving inscriptions on the walls in October would have been impossible. Interestingly, discussions about the catastrophe occurring not in summer but in autumn have been going on for a long time, but so far, the official date of the eruption remains the same. The remains of this individual look similar to those of other people trying to escape nature's destructive forces. However, after studying them, scientists came to a shocking conclusion. Pompeians didn't die from suffocation, as previously thought. Instead, they believe people died due to exposure to extremely high temperatures, this discovery explains why Pompeians were found in poses as if death occurred instantaneously. If someone feels suffocation, they lose strength and simply collapse upon dying. However, the clay casts suggest otherwise. Perhaps this theory will gain more evidence, and then the tragedy of Pompeii will be revealed to us from a completely different perspective. The Stabian Baths, or Stabia Thermae, are a true masterpiece of antiquity preserved to this day. Constructed in the 3rd century BC, the Stabia Thermae are a complex consisting of five public baths, located near the intersection of two main streets in Pompeii. Due to the ash that completely covered the thermae, they have been well preserved. Now, anyone can enjoy the beauty of this attraction, and there is indeed much to admire. The walls of the baths are adorned with magnificent frescoes depicting ancient gods, the ceilings feature stucco in various intricate patterns. The floors are covered with beautiful mosaics, and some rooms have statues of deities. Thus, Pompeians enjoyed not only the bathing procedures, but also the magnificent interior of the Stabian Baths. An interesting attraction for tourists in Pompeii is the laundry. The ancient Romans were very clean and paid great attention to their appearance. The use of perfumes, a dazzling white smile, and beautiful clean clothes were mandatory attributes of a wealthy person. Therefore, 
Laundries in ancient Rome were very popular. Special laundry workers known as Falones were involved in washing, rinsing, dyeing, and ironing clothes. The laundry in Pompeii was equipped with two large basins. Its walls and floors were decorated with frescoes and intricate mosaics. Unfortunately, part of these were damaged during World War II. The laundry also had a press for ironing clothes and containers for storing urine. But what does urine have to do with it, you might ask? At that time, there was no laundry detergent, and resourceful Romans figured out that stains on clothes could be removed with ammonia, which is found in urine. Falones roamed the city collecting the most important substance for washing, mainly in public toilets. After collecting a sufficient amount of urine, they mixed it in a large vat with water and alkali, then placed the clothes in it. After washing, the clothes were rinsed in another basin with clean water, and then dried on the roof or over smoldering sulfur. Despite such unpleasant work, laundries were always in demand and brought in high income. During the excavations of the city of Pompeii, many estates of wealthy local residents were discovered. One of them became a legendary attraction and was named Villa of the Mysteries. Its walls were adorned with frescoes depicting strange, mystical rituals. Unusual drawings were found only in one room of the house, while the walls of the other rooms were decorated with quite typical images of that time. The mysterious fresco is placed on all four walls. Its total length is 17 meters, and the height is 3 meters. It features 12 different scenes, each smoothly transitioning into the next. Interestingly, the main character of this composition is a woman, accompanied by priestess girls. Scientists suggest that the fresco depicts a ritual of worshipping the god Dionysus. This is indicated by the image of Dionysus's companion, Silenus. Apparently, the fresco's plot demonstrates the rite of a woman's initiation into the secret of the cult. But exactly which one remains a mystery? Historians still cannot determine who owned this villa. Perhaps the woman depicted in the frescoes. It is also unknown what happened in this room and why only its walls are adorned with mystical drawings. That's all from me for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.